Three teenage boys have been killed after being hit by a car while standing at a bus stop in West London last night. They were also standing uh, near to the bus stop behind me with a group of other teenagers who police say were all unharmed uh, in the incident. It's difficult to know exactly what happened, but there are some markings presumably made by investigators on the road along here, and it would appear uh, that uh, the car has hit a wall, a fence, it's even hit an ambulance, uh, sorry, not an ambulance, uh, um, a lamppost, uh, which has been shorn off. Throughout the day, more and more people have been coming here to leave flowers and pay their respects. It's thought the three teenagers who lost their lives were all aged around 16 and we've been told that they were on their way to a party. Many of the people who've been leaving flowers just across the road, you can see behind me, have been family and friends. And many of them look visibly upset. Now, police don't know if what happened was an accident, but they're not treating it as terrorism. A car mounted the pavement and it's believed it's at that point that it then hit the three teenagers. What we do know is that the, a person inside the car, which was a black Audi, was arrested. He's a 28-year-old man. He was taken to hospital and now police are appealing for witnesses. An investigation is underway into the deaths of three teenage boys killed when a car ploughed into them as they were walking to a party. Flowers have been laid at the scene in West London where the collision happened yesterday evening. Police have arrested a 28-year-old man who was in the car. From the scene, Olivia Kinsley reports. For a few minutes this afternoon, police closed the road where the crash happened for friends and family to say goodbye to three clearly much-loved boys. They're said to have been walking to a 16th birthday party just a few hundred metres away when the crash happened. A boy started to unload the ambulance of everything that was in there, first name, kids, everything. A boy came and stood because I was in the car in the passenger seat, I had the window down. He was standing next to me on the pavement and he was on the phone to, I think it was his mum or his dad, saying, oh, my friends are dead, he was crying, he was like... Had his head, hands on his head, and he was saying, oh, mum, they've, they've, um, they've killed um, our friends. And we, uh... I just listened and I remember he kept saying, please come and get me, please come and get me. And I don't know what she, she must have been saying what's going on because he, he kept saying, oh, um, yeah, they're dead, mom, they're dead, please, please come pick me up. was one of the first on the scene immediately after it happened. I could see the incident in front of me and uh, I had called them at that point and people, there was a bus driver in front of us and he came over and said, oh yes, there's, there's someone dead in the road. He came over to us and he said, oh, who are you on the phone to? And I said, oh, I'm, on, I'm on the phone to the emergency services, I'm waiting to get through and he said to me, oh, there's no point in, in, in speaking to the emergency services, they're already dead, there's no point, there's no point. And then he walked back over towards the um, entrance to the cemetery which on the left hand side just in front of his bus and he was having a cigarette and this guy came over in a high vis jacket back of his jacket he had a response officer he wasn't a police officer or anything i thought maybe he could have been but he wasn't he had a cigarette as well and i, I thought this is, this is strange i mean people just drive like lunatics you know bad weather good weather they don't care they just they take that 60 mile an hour speed limit to the extreme. It's a 60 mile an hour road and 
cars and vehicles drive up and down here sometimes like it's a speed trap. Now this road's busy 24-7 and if I'm being totally honest I'm surprised that there hasn't been more, more accidents along here. I take it that you was um, the security guard in the lorry park that night? Um, I wasn't there personally that night. I, I'd finished, I think I finished about six o'clock, seven o'clock, and then um, I started again the following day. Oh. So I, I wasn't actually working overnight. On because it's a Friday night, if I remember correctly, wasn't it? Yeah, the, yeah, 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 it was. Um, the only reason I asked that because there was a picture taken of the car and all the newspapers of a cre apart from I think it's one or two have yeah. accredited that picture to you. Yeah, uh, I that was sent to me by the um, by the person working, um, and obviously when I when I got. When the following day, when I was there, the following day, um, the press, I, so I obviously they asked me how I knew about it. I said, well, I, I, got, a, com, I got a call from the guy working on that night. Um, oh, right. Told me what happened. He sent me a picture of the car and obviously they asked if they could have a picture of the car. And I said, well, yeah, I, c I couldn't see any reason why. Well, they couldn't. Oh, and, um, okay. So you wasn't. It wasn't actually you on duty in the secure in the lorry park then. Not, not on that night. No. Um. I'm not sure I'd even be able to get help because it was. Um. We've had so many staff come and go since then. I'm. I couldn't even tell your fan who was actually working that night. Oh right. Okay then. So you don't remember who sent you the picture then? I. I, I couldn't. I couldn't honestly. Um. Tell you it's so I, I couldn't because I say um, that wasn't my contract security contract at that particular time. I was working for another company then. It's a long story with that, but um, the um, I can't I say I couldn't even remember who who was working that night. I say they sent me the picture and they phoned me up and told me what happened. But um, he said, "Oh, um, there's been a big accident outside." I, I said. And he, he, said, he said it looks like there's multiple um, fatalities. Not uh, my issue, but I said, mate, come on, you know, that's not a thing to um, joke about, thinking, you know, thinking he was exaggerating it. Yeah. And um, then he, he sent me a picture of the car, sent me that picture of the car, which obviously um, I, I gave, I forwarded yeah. on. So I, think, I mean, I think it was ITV or whoever the news channels were, then obviously, then, it, and, um, they what they wanted to um, obviously put his name. I said, well, I said, I, I, unless I can speak to the guy working, I said I don't really want to um, pass on his name and details just like that. But obviously, cause that time in the morning he was still asleep. Yeah, yeah. And so I said, well, look, just you know, credit it to just thinking, you know, if you need to put a name to it, then just put mine. It's not, um, yeah, you know, not not an issue, like. Right? So do you know if this other photographer got in touch with you then and asked if he could claim the rights to I've, 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 this is, like I said, this is the first, um, first communication other than when I was, yeah. when I spoke to the press that night. I spoke to the press that night. I spoke to the press that night. That night. That night. That night. I mean, I, yeah, I've had no no um, contact with anyone regarding regarding that photograph. Obviously, that on that particular Saturday morning, the press were asking if I could give them that picture. So I was WhatsApping it to every journalist and yeah, you know, from BBC, ITV, and whoever else was there. But um, I'm not saying no, so they was all all aware. So the press was all aware. It wasn't you working that night, and you had no info. When they yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. obviously, when when I come out, they they said, "Oh, do, do you know what happened?" I said, "Well, no." I said, "I, I was I wasn't here last night." I said, "But I understand the vehicle 
for whatever re- whatever reason mounted pavement and whatever happened. I said, but um, no, I said, I, you know, I, I wasn't here last night on on that night, so I couldn't. Yeah. I, you know, I, I didn't see what had happened. I mean, to be, be fair, to be fair, even the guy work the guy working wouldn't have seen what had happened. No, no, we've um, we've got the CCTV, so yeah. we can see that. I mean, what the person think, working did was come out. He yeah. didn't turn right where all the boys were and needed help. He turned left and went up and took a picture of the car. Oh, right, OK. Yeah, yeah. So, but we wanted to know whether any statements were taken from the police because what the police did, they took all the witness statements yeah. and retyped up their own versions. So that I'm was... Right. Yeah, so that was why, you know, exactly what they did in Hillsborough. So that yeah, yeah. was another reason why we wanted to talk to you to see if you had made yeah. a statement and then no, we'd I mean, know whether it was missing or not. No, like, like I say, um, the only people I spoke to uh, were the reporters that wanted their um, story. But like I said, because I, I didn't say anything, I could only say, you know, it's a very tragic um, very tragic incident and um, people drive along that road like absolute yeah. pillocks at the best of times. But obviously, that, you know, that wasn't really related you know, really significant to um, obviously what happened, but um, you know that that is all I could tell them. Yeah, yeah. Okay, then if it does come to your mind who it was um, yeah. at all, who 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 took the picture, we just basically want to know if a statement was made to the police. I, I don't. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I don't recall them ever saying. I think basically they, they had a look. They had a look outside, and then. Um, Disappeared back back onto where they were working. I'm, I, w- I wasn't aware of anyone um, giving any something yeah. to the police regarding that at the time. I mean, and certainly didn't happen afterwards. I know that. Yeah. For an absolute fact. But, um, n- you know, nothing was said at the time from, obviously, when I, when I went back there the following morning, um, nothing was mentioned by, about the um, guy working overnight giving a statement. So. Okay. Okay, then. But, no, that's if great. By, if by some miracle I, I can track back who it was and find out, I'll um, let you know. But I very much doubt um, I'll have any joy with that, to be honest. Hi, is that Gavin I'm speaking to? Yeah. Sorry to trouble you. I'm from an independent production company. We're doing a documentary film and um, we're trying to clear some third party content that's, that's going in the film. Um, now, there seems to be a bit of confusion over an image that's copyrighted to a, a few different people, and one of them is yourself. Um, so, I'm just giving you a call to see if we can clear that up um, at all. Now, the image in question was taken on the night of the 26th of January 2018. The picture of a damaged motor vehicle, It was there was an incident um, in Hayes. Uh, I think you were there the day after, um, but there's the picture of the car is on your um, gallery pages linked to the actual incident. Were you the photographer that took that image? I don't know if you recall the incident. It was, I think, there was three teenagers yeah. killed when a car mounted the pavement. Do, do, do you remember it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do remember it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I do remember it. Yeah. I think the best thing is it's sending me an email. Yeah. Um, and I can uh, see it because I can't remember this a long time ago. Um, and then I'll, I'll let you know. It may have been something that was issued by the police or something. I can't remember to be honest.
we shouted towards them to say, you know, what's going on? Just can you stop fighting? We're going to call the emergency services. And then I recall uh, at that point, one of the boys um, came over towards my side of the vehicle and he said, oh, so my friend's been um, killed. She got out of the vehicle and she went round to the front of the ambulance and she stood there and she just paused for a second and she just kind of looked and then I remember there were some boys and they came over to the back of the ambulance and she went round to and they opened the boot and they were just taking out everything, bags, oxygen bottle in, a, in the green bag and then I remember the, a couple more minutes later some police officers arrived on foot and one of them he came over a white police officer. On foot. Yeah, on foot. He came over on foot. They were running down the road. One of them was running quite fast. And at that point, I thought, why, why are there police vehicles? Because I thought that would be the safest thing. Because obviously, they've been told that there may be a stabbing or just, you know, there's a location with a lot of people. I thought that the safest thing would be to come in a vehicle. But they were on, the, on the foot. So the first one spoke to me quickly. They told me to leave the scene and then I saw the other one coming behind him. So a police officer coming up to the scene of a major incident, knowing you're a potential witness, that immediately tells you to leave the scene. Yep. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and did you follow that order? Yeah, see initially I remember not leaving straight away and I think that's what aggravated them because I thought that wasn't right. And then that's when he got a bit animated and said, can you, can you go, can you go? And he put his hand like that, and, you know, forcefully, and can you go? Um, so then I started to turn around, eventually left. And then I remember I was quite angry at that point because I felt like I shouldn't have to, I shouldn't be leaving. In the mirrors on the side of the car running down the road and a uh, white police officer with a hat, he was wearing a hat, white, short sleeve top, with the black, um, the black jacket thing that they wear. And he came over and he said, happened. And we said, yeah, we see what happened. And he said, okay. And he said, can you just leave, leave the, leave the area, leave the scene. So there's the bus. We were behind the bus. We were already here by this point. Okay, so the altercation's happening. Yeah, we was already here by now. There was no, is it a van? There was no van. No van. No. No. I mean, we was already here because we saw the altercation and we were the first person. I was the first person to say anything about an altercation in a forecourt of a petrol station. So I know I was, the, we, we were there when it was happening. And our car's not even there yet, and the, this altercation's already, already over, so... No. So where are we then? There, that's us. So everything's over and we're arriving, so how would I know? that there was any kind of altercation or anything if we weren't there when it was going on. And we were directly behind that bus. I spoke to the bus driver. I sat behind, we sat behind the bus. I had a conversation with the bus driver 
and we stayed behind that bus until the point that he left. And all these cars that appeared to be driving through the scene, it's not possible. It's not possible. It's not possible. When they went, when they walked over to that van, they were walking over to us because that's when they said they wanted us to phone the emergency services for them. There's no way they can move through. How does that make you feel? Just sick, angry, and sick because I know for a fact that I was there when when the altercation was taking place. Before it even started to happen, we were there in the car. So the fact that it seems that we've come back so far, in, we're so much further back in this footage. The question that I'm asking is how would we know, how would I know, being the first person to give a witness statement to the press, there's no other information out there, how did I know this happened if we were all the way back, how, who told me no one, I didn't know anyone on that scene personally, we were just two citizens coming across this, it wasn't, we didn't know anything, so yeah, sick, makes me feel sick and angry because it's, it's, it feels like a crime against us and our our truth. Yeah. Because it's just painting an incorrect picture and it's just manipulation really. Because we know that did not happen the way that we've just seen that. And it's... It's just... Horrible that they would take us... Two innocent people... And make us look like liars or paint us out to be much further back we didn't see any of this and if if the families of of the victims were to look at my statements and then look at this footage they would think that i'm a liar and that really hurts because we've always told the truth and nothing but the truth and even even here when you can see the bottom of our car is red car the altercation's already finished, and we were already there, so I know that this is not right. If Jane Shaw was sat here today, what message would you have for Jane? I would firstly like to ask her why. Why would she want to be part of something like this? Why would she want to adapt on something? The police, in my, in, in my opinion, are there to protect us, to protect the people, to, to come out when people are in need and to take away their problems and to make people make people's lives better. So the message I would have to her is if she wants to call herself a police officer or a detective, how can she go home at night knowing that this footage is faked, knowing that there's there's the truth isn't being told and that innocent children lost their lives at the hands of something which isn't isn't true isn't as it seems. How can she how can she live with herself? That's all I want to ask her is how can you live with yourself and why? Why would you want to be part of this? Why would you I mean I'm not sure if Jane Shaw has children, but if she does, if she does have children, how can she go home and look at her children and know that, that what she knows? Because if I was a parent, I, w I couldn't not having children. I would just think of imagine if that was my children. So my message to her would be to, to take a long look at herself and to take a long look at what she knows and to come out and tell the truth 
because I would respect her more. Because when I met her, she came into my house, I respected her as a police officer, I respected her for her line of work, and she made me feel calm and reassured. And that's what I would want her to be. Not, not someone who could be part of a police cover-up like this. I don't know how she could live with herself. Tape placed across that in sign there. Tape, yeah. And there was a pole here, just over here. Yeah, which has been cut out, yeah. On that night, this garage was closed off, yeah. Closed off at the point of when the incident occurred. Why was that? Because they cordoned off all the areas. No, it was cordoned off before the incident. No, after the incident. It wasn't cornered off before the incident. How would it be cornered off? So who cornered it off? The police. Whoever got out of the car, ran down the road, yeah, and ran onto the forecourt, yeah? No, he came down that side, then something, he went all around. So, no, I'm not going to film you, don't worry. Right? No, you are filming. No, I'm not filming you. I look. know you're filming. No, right. Well, if, look, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not pointing anything at you, I'm just trying to find out Definitely, the truth. how can you point on me anything? I no. wasn't involved, so I was No, but you were here that night. But no, I was here. I was not here. I was in there. I yeah. was in my office. I was working on the computer. Right. Uh, then at around nine, <laughs> half nine, then the police started coming and everything started coming up here. About half past nine, nine o'clock, the police yeah, came. Yeah, right. around okay. that time. Because when the fight happened on the forecourt... The fire? No, there fight, was... A fight, a fight. There was a fight, wasn't there? There wasn't any fire on the forecourt. A fight. There wasn't any fight on the forecourt. You were lying because I saw it, I was a key witness. So if you were here that night, then you're lying. You're not supposed to film me. I won't film you. No. I'll point it away. Look, have the conversation. Have the conversation, yeah? You're saying there was no fight on the forecourt that night. This is called the forecourt. There was no fight on this premises. No, there was. And you know, you know how I know you're a liar. Because whatever happened around, I didn't use. So you close the station off. Yeah, and, but you don't recall any fight on the forecourt. No. Even right. here, <coughs> being a manager, I came in here and asked you what you guys are doing here. Is it this car you're talking about? No, I want to know who that car was over there. It was yeah. terrific. But I can't give you any answer for what I don't know. Right? Well, you were managing that night, yeah? Okay. So when all the commotion went off, what did you do? Did you stay in the back? Did you come out? Did you, did you come no, out to see what was tell, going on in the forecourt? I'm not supposed to interfere anything which is happening within the police things, right? None of our area was covered. There was no fight within our area. There was no uh, happening in our area. And this site was not even involved. It was involved in just such a case that we had some CCTV views yeah. which uh, police wanted to see. So they just checked it and that's all we were involved in that. Nothing apart from that. Yeah, no, no, what I'm saying is you're saying there was no fight on the forecourt. Exactly, no fire on the forecourt. I'm, I'm here. I'm just going to stop. I'm here. You go on BBC News, you go on Sky, you go on ITV, you go on all of the news premises. It says a fight broke out on the forecourt at Esso Petrol Garage on Shepperston Lane. So you could, you're continuously what? filming me without what? my permission. What? Oh, hang on. Stand there. Just stand there. Yeah? I'll stand there. Alright? 
No, 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 I'm just saying you're continuously filming no, me. I'm just, no, I'm not. Look, I'm pointing it over there. I'm just explaining to you. This is not. This is not. I've got the CCTV. It shows the angle from that camera. It shows a fight on the forecourt right there. You can see it with your own eyes. Okay. Yeah? So What's it in relation to? In relation to the incident of um, what happened to three boys down outside the cemetery. The, bo the bus stop? Ah, uh, that one. Yeah, well, right. that wasn't a bus stop, but yeah, that yeah, one. Yeah. So it's in relation to that. We've got some stuff to show you as well. Yeah, so where are you from? We're doing a public investigation. You're, you're so we've got some stuff to show that. She's the mother of one of the guys yeah. that was killed. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, um, we've got some stuff to show you as well. Okay, um, I don't know which watch attended that. Yeah, I've already joined here in yeah. the end of November. Yeah, just yeah. before Christmas. Or just anyone, if there's anyone we can speak to, like here, the. You can check a day and refund it. Either aware of yeah. the situation. Yeah. We can't look and see yeah. who was in it, because it ain't. Thank you. But um, Thank uh, you. as far as I'm aware, from memory, uh, we had very little to do with the, the incident. Yeah. As far as the father getting involvement was. was really really minimal um because you know we, we get called when persons are trapped etc etc and we weren't called to that weren't called to that weren't called to that I, I, I couldn't give you the exact circumstances because I don't know. Yeah. Well, we've got we've got details that um, apparently you was called at nine twenty seven that night. Love. It was the twenty sixth of the first two thousand and eighteen. Mm -hmm. Now we have a recorded call to the emergency services, which was made more or less straight away. Mm -hmm. um, in that, which we're happy to play you. No. If you need to listen, and in. That call straight away, um, which was more or less straight away when the incident happened, they're stating that the car looks like it's going to explode, that there's smoke coming from the car and things like that. So on that notion, I would have assumed that the fire service would have been called straight away for something like that. Isn't that something normally that the fire service would deal with? That's something that, that is for a fire service, it's not for the police to attend if a car is smoking, is it? It's, it's for the fire service, I would assume. Yeah, again, depending on what, I, I, it's difficult to say, we get called to cars smoking all the time, but it does depend on what was exactly said in the call. Right, bear with me one moment. Are you at the car? Yeah, I'm at the car. Right, okay, I'm just going to go and Alright, so no one's in the car. No one's in the car. Right. Sorry? Hello? Hello? Hello, what's going on? Um, it's, I don't know, but the car is like burning and everything. I don't know if it's going to blow up. Right, are you, are you all away from it now, yeah? Yeah. And there's definitely no one in the car? No one's in there. There's people there. They said no one's in there at all. But we can't really think at all. Right, okay, what I'll do then, if an ambulance is not required, I'm going to hang up the phone. Probably if I looked a bit closer, I could probably get the model, but uh, <laughs> um, 
I would say that's uh, um, an ADL uh, Dart vehicle. You can see there's lights on it inside and you can see something that looks like a, a building block but it might be the luggage racks inside. Yeah. It's luggage racks inside, it's definitely a hotel opera because they have luggage racks yeah. instead of seats. Yeah. Um, or it might be the one that they've got that's got like an all over advert for yeah. Stonehenge and various Warwick mm. castles yeah, and things like that on it. That. But I, I could tell you 100% categorically that the video footage, and I'm not saying the vehicle hadn't come along um, Shepherdston so, Lane at some point, yeah. Yeah. but I'm as confident as I can say from overhearing and you know obviously once the police are gone the guys are talking about it in the office right i can guarantee that it it came up no vehicle none of our vehicles came along just either side of the accident um but i obviously want to be cautious about what i say it, it doesn't make yeah. this statement true then three coaches returns on so the coaches are I don't suppose it does show through, does it? No. I'm pretty sure that they would have done a witness statement in handwriting at yeah. the time, because yeah. um, they would certainly need to add it add it signed, um, or unless they did it and then brought it back and had it signed at a later date. But that, that still begs the question of them trying to say, or, or this gentleman, you know, I have my own thoughts on that when they retype up people's versions and don't get them t signed by the mm -hmm. people. Um, you know, it makes me query that, where they're trying to say that third vehicle that was on the road that night in the vicinity mm -hmm. of that collision was City and Circle, and it wasn't. It was a hotel hopper mm -hmm. bus, which then makes that part of the statement a lie. That bus there is definitely a hotel. Yeah. I'll put the mortgage on that. So it's very easy to for an average person to miss it, but these are not natural light sources here. These are deliberate over blob layers that are just meant to hide any detail you know this is just outrageous quite frankly therefore many of them most statements are missing we've sp spoken to many of witnesses so as the uh, private investigators and their statements are not in that bundle and do you know how many statements there are mentioning this horace miller and this ford fiesta finesse many So what vehicle are you saying this is? It's a Vauxhall Corsa. Yeah. Uh, registration roughly 2001 to 2003. Based on its identifying marks. Um, okay, so... But what's important to remember, if, if, that were, if it was, was a... that car mentioned in, in the... No, not at all. So it's not traced at all? No. Not only is it not traced, the statements say, let's see, let's say, from who Horace Miller, whoever he is, right, do not match up to the scene, yeah? So not only was he not in a Ford Fiesta finesse, his statements don't match up to the scene, yeah? So if you read his statements where he says, the driver gets out of the car, runs and falls in front of my car, wow. So whatever way you look at it, you can't go left and you can't go right. You can't say Horace Miller was in the car in front of the bus because we know by looking at the CCTV that that car never saw a thing. Yeah, we also now know as well that that wasn't the Ford Fiesta, yeah? So if you wanted to look at the car in front of the bus as being the Ford Fiesta, let's just say that the police wanted to look at it. You can't, because we know he didn't see nothing. And the car that left the scene, which wasn't a Ford Fiesta finesse, which is a Corsa, backed up by many people, stating it's a Corsa, yeah? Not just one, two, because we make sure we back up from people who know what they're talking about, right? Which we've got evidence of. Doesn't match up to his statements. 
alone everything else we have that goes along with it as well. What does what does Horace Miller say in his statement? Where does he say his car is? He doesn't physically say my car is in front of a bus, but he states the driver gets out, runs, yeah, and falls in front of my car. Now, as you know, the car that he's close by is the car, yeah, on the CCTV, is the car that is in front of the bus. Is there CCTV of the driver running out and mm -hmm. running back? Yeah, from a distance, that's on there. I understand what you're saying. I don't think you do. I don't agree with it. You know, I, I, I do not. I do not think that this was a murder. I do think that it was a collision. And I think it was an absolutely tragedy what happened to your boys. I'm okay. actually quite ashamed that you're sitting there saying that. I can only, woman I can to only, woman, I can only mother to mother, you. I've just informed you that we had the evidence that we're willing to show you. I'm more than happy hang to on, see that, hang Tracy. On. No, you've just stated something mm -hmm. without even looking at anything. I've just informed you when I come in this room that the MP sent a letter with four points for a retrial. Okay. And you've just sat there and said that. You wasn't on the investigation team. You're obviously a coward and scared of whatever's going to happen to you. Yes, you are. I'm not. I'm crazy. telling you, woman to woman, you are. Okay. You wasn't in, not, in that investigation, so I'm how just, would you know that? I'm just saying, from what I've seen of the investigation... Which is what? What have you seen? I'm not... Tracy... No, it's interesting. I need to know. That's a normal question. What have you seen of the investigation? I have read through the reports of the investigation. What reports? And from what I can understand, it is what it, I've said it is. No, it's not. Okay? So, no, it's not. Is, there is nothing that I have seen with regards to this that leads me to think that... that what you have just you seen? Say what, what, what so have you're you contradictory seen? in how you've spoken. Yeah, the question is, yeah. what have you seen to base that opinion on? What? So I've seen the initial reports. What so reports? you've seen Simon Mao's collision report? I've seen that, yes. Right. Have you seen the CCTV evidence? I've seen part of that, yes. Right. Which part? I can't remember from, you know, but I've seen some of it. Um, what part of the video did you see? I can't remember. No, did you not. see a Ford Fiesta in the video? I can't remember. So all the police have got it wrong and you so can't what? remember. Come Polly, on, do you not know. think this is a little bit suspicious yourself? Right. What are you saying? No, you're, so this is what I don't understand. Right. What, what, it is, what, what, what I'm is trying your... to get through, there right. wasn't a Ford Fiesta. And they know exactly what we're Miller. saying. Do you, under, do you not understand Tracy. that? We're saying. Tracy. You've contradicted don't. yourself okay. twice so far in this meeting, Jenny de Fabia. There wasn't a Ford Fiesta there. Did you see a Ford Fiesta in the CCTV? So you're saying there's not a Ford Fiesta? You can see that by the vehicle that's being so driven. So you're saying that Horace has been planted? Is that, is that what you're saying? I'm not saying anything. As I told you, I just told you he never saw it. And he wasn't in a Ford Fiesta finesse. But go. we've got somebody called Horace Miller that has given a statement. Yes. So if you're saying that he's never seen it, then you're saying that he's been planted. Well, however you wish to put it. So, so what, why are you saying he's not, he wasn't there, though? Colin, you do understand what I'm saying here. Uh, I understand what you're saying. Right, yeah, you do understand but you're what I'm saying. saying. That, he, that witness that was spoken to at the time yeah. by officers yeah. wasn't there? Yeah, no, he wasn't. No, it wasn't. But and it wasn't a why, Ford why, Fiesta finesse. But why are you saying that it wasn't a Fiesta and he, that he wasn't there? Because you're lying. Because the statements are lying. That's why. Because he wasn't there. We can prove to you that from the CCTV, and we can prove that to you from the witnesses who were there. So there's your answer. So, so which witnesses who were there? Well, I'm not going to give you their there. names, because you know who was there. If you go through the list of witnesses, you can see who was there. You can see what adults were at that scene. You can see who helped the children, yeah, and who didn't help the children. You can see who stood by Tudor Sama, yeah. You've got the statements, you've got the evidence, and you know what I'm talking about. Statements that Horace Miller Row do not match up to the scene. They do not match up to the CCTV evidence either. And they do not match up to what the witnesses are saying. Yeah? Everything you can pull apart. The lighting, everything.
if I give a statement, I'm an independent person, I give a statement to police for a purpose, that purpose is a criminal prosecution, it doesn't automatically follow that you have the right to my statement. There are little things in that, and I don't want to get into it now. So when you say you're entitled to it, on any moral judgment, of course you are. In a Absolutely. criminal, for a criminal in trial, a process, you are. Yeah. In a process, yeah. you might be, you might be, but that's the Crown Prosecution Service that would be entitled to it. Not necessarily, it's, there are niceties of law that, that sometimes defy common sense. And I don't want to make a comment here, and then you say, well, hold on a second, you said I could have everything. I've seen the list, I've seen some of it, and some of it makes perfect sense that you could have, and I'd see no reason why not. There are other elements on there, I can see why it might not be natural, because we would have to go to the person and say, are you okay for the family to have this statement? And they may say, not really. I would expect you to have been told that if you made a reasonable request for it. But there may, so those practicalities, I think, I can, can hopefully have that list, definitely. Yeah. But I do think, given where you are in your position, bearing in mind you're not now going to give the new evidence either to me or to the IAPC, then that new evidence has to go. You're, you know, you, you've limited yourself. Oh, sorry, that's, I don't mean that to sound critical. You have one route now, which is through. Well, it's um, not. It's not. Well, it's, it's not, been it's not the actually General, a case that it? we're not giving you the evidence. The Met Police have the CCTV. So go back to Alberton Police Station. Get the CCTV and watch it for yourself. Okay, so what? What? I, I'm not going to start reinvestigating something without the grounds to do so. And whilst I've listened to everything that you said today, what I would watched, ask for, you not just listen. I've seen, I've seen watched. some CCTV, yes. And if I'm honest, I just don't know enough to interpret it the way you have. I'm not questioning what you have interpreted. Yeah, it's as, not, it's not, it's not our interpretation. It, Nick's very good at writing things like that. You know that I, I know, I understand that's your interpretation. No, these are facts. And I don't doubt it. Right. Yeah. Just said, I don't know how corrupt that. everyone is. So until you start doing something to show me that there is some sort of honesty somewhere in your bones to do the wrongdoing, undo the wrongdoing that your force that you represent that does not have a good name anymore, yeah, for free murdered children. Could have been five, could have been eight, because there was another free walking towards. And you imagine how you feel if that was yours. It's not going away. Matthew, just, not just going away. Complete this, just, just, just so that everyone understands. Um, let's change the let, let, Let's change the so that the families were happy for you to see everything that they've seen and look at it through their eyes with a, mm -hmm. a new investigation team and, and for you to reopen the investigation. And just what would you what would you actually do? Yeah, that's different if you open the investigation. What would, yeah. what would you what would you so, and what actually, could you do? Yeah. And I wouldn't commit in this room now. No. I'd be straightforward with you. It would be unfair to do so. But what I would definitely commit to is to consider any new evidence and I have within my part of the map, my direct part, the homicide and serious crime review group, which are experienced investigators that have all been senior investigators for homicide and other serious crime and we will do a internal review that is an option internal review well it's an internal aspect is that they're all met officers i might as well be straight up with you i just want you i just mm. apart from my understanding to know what matthew might be able to enable if if that if that if that were different to it yeah. so there is a team uh, that could really look at the case but it's but internal you, but, yeah, but, but, no. yeah they're not officers. yeah no Let me tell you just this one last yeah. thing. When I signed the victim impact statement and the, the, the police and officer, which is what I'll call them now, came round my house and he told me it wasn't a crime against my son. It was a crime against the state. Mm. I'm telling you now and you, that was a crime against my son. The state don't own my son. It was a crime against my son. That was a crime against me his siblings, his family, his friends, and the same for George and Harry. And something needs to be done about it. Because but I won't give up doing what I'm no, doing. No, no. Okay. Do you mind if I just no keep this division what? between yes. the performance of the police yes. and uh, yes. 
uh, yes, securing a retrial. Yeah. So on, on, on securing a, a retrial, as, as we've all said, all the feedback of we need, we need fresh evidence. It sounds like you're, you're very clear in your mind that you have got fresh evidence. So uh, in terms of how this might happen, my understanding is that, uh, as we've identified before, the attorney, it's kind of the Attorney General. Yeah. So it starts with the most senior law officer in the land. Um, I think you, you, you know, you should have a meeting. Uh, and I will say that I think you should have a meeting. Okay, so that, that's, uh, uh, that's what I will Why do Why couldn't you have got, that, got us that before then? What would be different this time to before? Twice we've tried now. Because... And twice we've been... Because, Chase, as I've always said, it, uh, everything I've heard back from the system, and you don't trust the system, I know that. No, it's absolutely said, not. Said, that's best the, law, the, law took its, the law took its course... Based on the base, you know, and the, the, the CPS felt that the process was done done fairly, and you know, two judges, two sets of different judges, got to the same view. So, if you're sitting there as the Attorney General, thinking this has been through a process, everyone's telling me that uh, the process was done properly. Of course, we've well, got course, families who don't agree with that. But, 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 no, but, no, but, no, but, but no, what I'm saying here is, you've come here saying this is new evidence. The only way you can reopen. Case in a trial is through new evidence. Mm. You have brought new evidence. I, mm. That is what I will tell the Attorney wow. General, which is the reason why I will say to him, I think you need to meet the family. Just watched mm. part one of the documentary. There's a part two, but as I said before, part two has to be kept for court. You see two witnesses in the documentary you've just watched. Since getting in contact with us and doing the filming with us, they have had threats, messages sent to them with my picture claiming to be me. And because of that, that is why we had to make the decision to cover up their faces and cover up their voices. Prior to that, they was happy to go on camera, show their faces, have their real voices. But after the threat they received, to keep them safe, we've had to cover up their voice and their face. I wish that we could give you everything that we know but because our aim is to get into court, have the right charge put on all of those that were in that car that night, all of them. And the right charge is three times murder, two attempted murder. This was not death by dangerous driving, far from it. But there's one thing that I wanna ask the Met Police and that I've never put out there before which is, at the time our boys were murdered, there was the alleged Darren Osborne case going on. Why is it, on the day our boys were murdered, which was the day the prosecution had finished their case, and the actual case finished on the 2nd of February 2018, why was it that one of those involved in that case was at the scene of our boys? Met police. Why was he there? And why, just a few months after what happened to our boys, I had a woman approach me, pretending to be a victim. She wasn't a victim. But in meeting her, the one thing she wanted me to do was to go to Finsbury Park Mosque and have a picture taken with the inn man there. Why? Why would someone try and get me to do that? It's been a hard journey. It'll be four years next month. It's painful, it's painful every day. And I shouldn't have to do this. I shouldn't have to do this at all. I had one copper throughout this 
whole four years say to me, don't stop fighting. I said, I won't. And they said, make sure you don't. Now, it should have been that copper doing what I'm doing. Should have been all those coppers that night doing the investigation. But they didn't. They chose to cover the crime up. And I just want to add again that we have been fighting for the correct charge, not fighting the sentence, not fighting the sentence. We've been trying to fight for the correct charge of three times murder to attempted murder, which will then sort out the sentence itself. I can say to you that we have come across no evidence whatsoever for it to show that Tudor Simon was the driver that night. But that's not to say that he wasn't. That's just to inform you that we have not come across no evidence for that. Another thing the police did was the very next day when they interviewed Tudor Sama, they gave Tudor Sama and his solicitor the full names of the witnesses that were at the scene. Many of them children. Why would you do that? Why would you do that, Met Police? Why would you give one of the murderers and his solicitor the full name of the children who were at that scene the very next day? And we have the evidence of that. Also met police that night. SO15 were at the scene. SO15 were there. We have that in the statements we have. In the paramedics reports, it clearly states it was a gold-paged incident. Which means the police took this all over. The police controlled all of this and those emergency services, including the fire station that is on Shepherdston Lane itself, where the incident occurred. Which means it was tactical, operational and strategic. And they divert all calls to a completely different control center. You heard the woman who answered one of the 999 calls tell the caller to stay on the line and ask for the police. Ask for the police when it was a fire service remit. What they did to our poor boys was treat them as if they were nothing. That our boys didn't matter to them. They just cast them aside like they meant nothing, yet they meant everything to us. Shame the police. Don't 
Just this moment, the free. I just don't think you understand.